sacred prophecy about three brothers. The sons of Lillane was like no other. The profound destiny, catalyst, keeper and king, her male progeny, the sons of Lillane. When I met Gregorio's wraith, I willed myself to see her aura, wanted to see it, begged deity to make her mine. How deep my jealousy was when that was the very instant when her aura revealed itself to Gregorio. I do not think a day has passed since my seclusion, when I have not thanked deity for disappointing me on the eve of my birthday, for making me wait. Lazarus Ezekiel Zakarian Capitulo 88. Throughout the evening Wraith sensed undercurrents in the conversation around her. Everyone was suddenly treating them as if she and Gregorio were a couple. After the meal they all went to a beautiful parlor with many small seating arrangements. Gregorio led her to an elegantly upholstered love seat and sat next to her, one arm around her shoulders, pulling her close to his side. Will you pardon our rudeness, Wraith, if I speak briefly with my son in our native language? Theo asked after sitting down across from them. No, that's fine, she said with a smile. She sipped the exquisite wine she had been presented with. When she first moved to Barcelona, Gregorio had asked her if she would master the language of Hath, as they were just beginning the negotiations for the transaction that they successfully concluded before coming to Estolia. The language seemed to her as if it was what you would get if you combined Gaelic and Arabic. Once she heard Gregorio speaking with some of the stable hands in Estolian, she yearned for the time she could focus on learning his language. Hearty was, however, every bit as challenging and intricate as she sensed Estolian would be. She could not master both languages at the same time, and he wanted her to learn hearty. She had begun to pick up some of the most common phrases in Estolian in the two weeks she'd been in the country, but she was putting off serious study until they were settled into a routine. While the two men talked, Gregorio pulled her against his side in the same way he had been doing all evening. His hand on her shoulder was distracting, especially when his thumb frequently brushed against her exposed skin. She relaxed against him, enjoying the fantasy that his hold was a sign that he was coming to care for her romantically. With three sons prophesied, Lillian felt deprived. She wanted her daughter, felt selfish to want her. The sacred I have asked Cassie to play a few songs, ask Wraith to dance. His father said, Gregorio glanced at the woman who was snuggled against his side as if they really were a couple. He hugged her closer to him, enjoying the freedom to hold her. Feeling with each supercharged nerve ending the ambience of her aura, the sure sense of home his soul was already anticipating. She is like a firefly, he said, amazed. How is it I did not notice before now? Deity knows you, knows your needs, gave you the signal you needed when you needed it. Gregorio looked again at Wraith. The glow of her aura was still visible, still beckoning every cell in his body to give his soul into her keeping. Her green eyes met his, and he saw her beauty within them. He was not sure what would happen this evening, but he was sure this woman was the only one he would ever love. It is not certain Zeke will find his Kaylee in time. You will take his place as keeper if he cannot. Theo's voice was solemn. From the blessing he received when he became the last resort, it is clear there will be some obstacle, beyond breaking his leg, that will stand in his way. Hopefully, he will be successful. It could be almost a year before we will know. Have you shared with him these insights? He asked his father. He had to struggle to focus on the topic of Zeke rather than Wraith. He felt like a moth drawn irresistibly to the flame of her aura. Perhaps there was an analogy between the two situations. Just as a moth was given the genetic imperative to seek the flame, so too were the sons of Zacharias drawn to the pureness of the aura of the woman destined to be their Kaylee, the keeper of their soul. Gregorio had to drag his attention back to the topic at hand and focus on his father's words. I will have a discussion with Zeke tomorrow. 
His father said, Once you have married, I would like you to immediately take on the elder year. During that time you will receive the necessary training, so if it is required of you to do so, you will be able to take Zeke's place. Gregorio frowned. I thought I was to take over the stable. Sebastian and Melanie are not quite ready to hang up their stirrups. Assuming everything works out for Zeke, you will be Sebastian's assistant and take over from him gradually over the next five years. For the sake of Estolia, it is critical you receive the training. He smiled slowly before saying, I am comforted, Gregorio, by the sure knowledge that you could take on Zeke's role with alacrity and you would fill the position well. Estolia has never been without someone to keep her soul, and I know you will do the job well if Deity asks you to. A sacred prophecy was like no others About three brothers, the sons of Lily I am going to play a few Estolian songs, Cassie announced to the room in general. Her grin was mischievous. Lillane crossed the room to pick up a violin stored on a shelf next to the grand piano. When they began to play, Wraith was lost in wonder at the beauty of the music, especially when Cassie started to sing in her pure soprano. Excuse me, Theo said. I'm going to go dance with the love of my life. By the end of the song, several couples were on the dance floor. When the second song began, Gregorio got to his feet and bowed to Wraith. Would you do me the honour of dancing with me, Wraith? He asked. Wraith stood and was grateful for Gregorio's hand steadying her. I think, Gregorio, that I've had more wine than I should have. He put one arm around her waist as he guided her to the dance floor. I should have warned you that Estolian wine is quite potent. He pulled her close to his body and started to dance with her to the tune of the beautiful lilting melody Cassie was playing on the piano. They danced for some time in silence. She enjoyed feeling Gregorio's solid physique holding her and guiding her with ease. She leaned her cheek against his chest and closed her eyes, listening to his heartbeat and dreaming they were a couple, that he loved her as much as she loved him. Love. She was in love with Gregorio Zakarian. Her nights were spiced with dreams of his body joined with hers, as part of the natural sharing that went with marriage. She wanted to belong to him exclusively, and have him belong to her. She could think of nothing more fundamentally perfect than to have his body wedded, welded, melded to hers. By the third song, she was wishing the night would never end. Your family is incredibly kind. They are almost too good to be true. He laughed softly in response. They are as human as anyone, he said, with all of the usual faults of character. But we do as a people tend to wear our faults as one wears undergarments, hidden from the world, while we wear our virtues as one wears a hat or a coat, the first piece of apparel others view. What faults? She had seen Gregorio justifiably angry when a new hire was discovered being cruel to the horses. She had also seen him focus with single-minded intensity on tasks, to the exclusion of all else. He did not seem to have any major character flaws. You have many times had to remind me to turn my attention from whatever I was doing to more mundane tasks. I have more than once snapped at you. He reminded her. I have also chosen a pathway I knew would cause my father and mother distress. Wraith felt a wrench of fear. Her acceptance of her own feelings, the wonderland of being in love, regardless of whether or not it was reciprocated, was so new, she did not want to suddenly discover her feelings were always impossible. What if the distress his family felt was over a preference for his own gender? She needed the hope of knowing he was, at the very least, attracted to women. She thought back to his interactions with both men and women over the last eight months but could recall no sign of his showing an interest in either. Her curiosity was piqued. What do you mean? She asked. She did not realize they were stopped in the middle of the dance floor or that her face communicated the way she feared his answer. He reached up and brushed her hair behind her ears, his thumb caressing the jut of her cheekbone before falling away, as if reluctant to stop touching her. It is a natural part of my religion for men to marry as soon after their thirtieth birthday as possible. At the age of eighteen, I told my father I would not indulge in any sort of intimacy with a woman unless I was certain she was the right woman for me. 
He told me I was closing my mind to many possibilities. His arms slipped back around her waist and they began dancing again. Wraith tried to understand what he told her. When they first met, he said he was utterly celibate. There were nuances in what he was saying, but they were eluding her. As they swept around the room, his body heat warming her, his thighs against hers, she felt one golden truth over all her doubts, like baker's sugar sifted onto a cake, he spoke only of loving women. She had a chance after all. When the music ended, Isaiah crossed the room to sit next to Lelaine at the piano. Together they played a duet, singing a song that was extraordinarily moving, even if Wraith did not understand the words. This song, Gregorio whispered in her ear, was put to music after Lelaine married Isaiah. It is an old poem written by one of our ancestors. It speaks of the incredible connection my ancestor created with his wife. How he could feel his soul rest within her keeping, and knew there would never be another woman that would interest him for the entirety of his life. When the duet ended, Wraith felt a wrench of disappointment. The festivities were due to Gregorio's return to his homeland, and his cousin's return from the hospital. After this evening it would be business as usual. I will walk with you back to your room. Gregorio told her. They said good night to the others, and then Gregorio put an arm around her waist so he could guide her back to the part of the palace that housed her room. To keep the promise, the promise to deity. Oh, oh, the promise to deity.